Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox and thanks for logging on. If you're not watching this on the new Watchbox app, you're doing it all wrong. New features available on the Apple App Store or Google Play. You'll see Watchbox Studios content one week early, exclusive on the app. Plus, you can read editorial content from our own Jack Foster and your favorite third party watch journals, magazines, and blogs. Also, shop our inventory, browse 3,000 pre owned and vintage luxury watches while also storing your collection, including details of condition, box, and papers. Finally, stay in touch with me, my team, and our entire family of Watchbox client advisors around the world. I'm Tim, and I'll see you on the app. Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox and thanks for logging on. On my show Watches tonight, I often receive wrist shots from enthusiasts who send in a his and hers, and I'm constantly wondering, what's that like behind the scenes? I have questions. Well, today I also have answers. This is a his and hers collector's episode, Tim and Kate Mancuso. Tim, welcome back. Kate, welcome aboard. Thanks, Thank you, Tim. Tim. It's great to be here. Good to be back. Now, I've heard his side of the story behind the Rolex Yachtmaster. I need to know your side of this story, and please dish the details. Oh, sure. Uh, so there's two parts of the story. Uh, first is when we got the Rolex, and the second is when the Rolex got its first injuries. Um, when we were, I guess, about a couple of years ago, yeah. eight years? Yeah, a couple we, of years, eight, just a couple. Just, just a couple. Um, so we were looking for a watch for Tim. And we had thought about all the different brands. He didn't want a Rolex. He thought a Rolex was too stuffy. He wanted something modern and new. I was trying to be cool. I know. So we looked at all the modern, new, cool brands and uh, decided that they really weren't what we were looking for. So we ended up in San Francisco at Tourneau. Mm -hmm. And we saw this oh, uh, steel and gold yacht master. And Tim tried it on, and I swear he had said the only watch he wouldn't want was, was gold, a gold Rolex. Rolex, but as soon as he put it on, he loved it. Uh, and at the time, we could buy it at the store, finance it, zero percent, so we did. Uh, but I got declined when I ran my credit because I was in a cash business at the time, so I had no actual uh, income history. Uh, income yeah. history. But on you, the books. you you were tutoring savants in SAT. Right? I was, I yeah. was. So I was an SAT tutor at the time. Um, so I was making good money, and we could certainly afford it on a financing plan. But Tim, <laughs> Tim had to qualify. Yeah, I was. So I was the credit, and Kate was the cash. Yeah, so it worked out well. So it, well. it was a good team work, a uh, good team effort. So we did pay it off in a year. I used to put twenty bucks a day every time I would tutor. Uh, I would put it in my secret stash so that I could make the monthly payment. And after a year, it was ours. So we've had it ever since. Uh, but in the, Thailand, I know in Thailand, that's when it's got its first injury. I don't think it had a scratch on it before that trip. But we were first in Saigon, Vietnam, and in Saigon, the streets are filled with motorcycles. So there's probably a thousand motorcycles on a five block stretch. So he said, oh, I want to get a motorcycle and ride around the city. I said, absolutely not. We will die. So instead of dying in the streets of Saigon, we made a deal that we would get a motorcycle in Phuket, which is where we were going next. Phuket's like a beach town, empty streets, much safer, I thought. So before we get on this motorcycle, I asked him, you know, have you ridden a motorcycle before? And he said, oh, yeah, absolutely. I rode them all the time when I was a kid. So I said, well, I've never been. That's on true. It's, it's not I a know, lie. I know. So I told him I've never been on a motorcycle. Uh, I don't know how to ride one. Are you sure that you can put me on the back? And he said, oh, absolutely. We're going to be fine. So we take off and he must have gone 40 miles an hour down a straightaway. The first turn, <laughs> wheels come out from underneath. He goes over the handlebars, I go over him. I didn't see it at the time, but his wrist must have gone straight on the pavement. We were wearing helmets, thank God. We whacked our heads. Uh, I ended up concussed, which we didn't know at the time. But We found out when she started throwing up violently. Yeah, so well, we figured yeah, that, that out. Something's usually number one. We figured number that one. out later on, but at the time he was more concerned with the Rolex. No, you first, <laughs> Rolex second. <laughs> But I, I was concerned. The Rolex was fine. Yeah, it was it, fine. It no, it. no worse for her, just a couple of scratches. Uh, but we, like, you know, 
pushed the bike back to the hotel at the time, cleaned ourselves up. He had scratches all over him. I had scratches all over me. And then he said, can we go back out? My pride was destroyed. Like I had, <laughs> I had to, to make up for this horrible, You had horrible, to get back on the yeah, horse. I, I had know, to, I know. The iron horse, literally. So I said, I forgive you. We'll get back on the motorcycle one time because I didn't want my last time on a motorcycle to be a fall. So we made about 20 miles. We did. And then we had it a started nice to downpour. Like a hundred percent like crazy tropical downpour. So we drove home in the downpour. In I got us back. Piece. Yeah. We thankfully. parked the bike. We didn't get back on it the rest of the trip. And you didn't actually start throwing up till the fall, like 36 oh hours God, later. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was, was this experience fine. of time. We were fine. Wow, blood vomit crashes. This is <laughs> you should be a Rolex I ambassador. Know, this is a great start to a collector conversation. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, so. But we love this watch. I mean, it's yeah. been through, it's probably been through more than any other I watch we have. I didn't properly illustrate last time how personal this watch is to me. Yeah. Like, this watch has seen everything. It was also it's been the through first everything. one that I ever bought for it's, you. Yeah, yeah so it was. And it's, it's special and it's never going to go anywhere. It's my, it's my, it's my watch. Yeah. It's what started us on this journey, yeah. I would say. Thank you. Yeah. Now your journey in watches, you said started in college, you had a very personal story behind. Yes. Um, so my first watch, which I don't have anymore it's not here uh it was a mavado and it was a very classic ladies watch uh mother of pearl dial double bangle bracelet very petite um i bought it after my grandfather passed because um when he was gone my grandmother called us up and said there was a few hundred dollars for each of the grandkids that he wanted us to have and so i didn't really know what to do with it but i wanted to do something special so instead of putting it in a bank account or you know going on a vacation, I thought I'll buy myself a watch. I'd never had a nice watch before that. Uh, so I was actually at home uh, in New York, uh, upstate New York, and I went to the mall by myself and I went to Macy's and I went to the, the case where they had these watches on display. And I kept looking for something that sort of spoke to me and this, this one watch jumped out and I, had, I bought it. I really cherished it. I had it for years. Um, I wore it so much, I never took it off. I wore it in the shower, I wore it at the pool, I wore it on sports, I, and it, the screws came a little bit loose in the bracelet and it started to uh, occasionally fall off my wrist. And I was silly, I should have brought it to get it fixed, but I just kept screwing it back in myself. Um, and we went to a concert and unfortunately you know, lost it uh, in the crowds. But it, it was very special. I thought about replacing it, but it wouldn't be the same, so I just have the memory now. So now it was the first, but it wouldn't be the last. No, no. I have to ask, was this watch the replacement? No, no, it was not. So my f next watch was this one. Yeah, this would have been the replacement. Yeah, so this is uh, Raymond Weil, and this is actually uh, a very old watch, and it has a lot of history, and it's belonged to many Mancusos. Yes, this was from my side of the family. So it was initially my uncle's, uh, who lived in San Francisco, and he passed away, unfortunately, in 2005. And my uncle that lives in Philadelphia inherited it. And then he never wore it, so he gave it to me when I was starting off on this big job. So I had a Burberry first, and then this was my second watch. I didn't bring this last time, but obviously a little dated, not quite my style. Uh, I a think it's 30, 34, man, 35 yeah. millimeters. Wasn't really me, but Kate looked at it and said it was great. So we took some links out, and then it became your watch. So it's yeah. been Kate's ever since. When do you feel like you became a watch collector? Because at some point, both of you crossed this threshold, and the proof is right here. Did you make that step together, or was he out in head as the corrupting influence? Ah, uh, well, it was definitely his fault. Um, he, he got into watches yeah, I, before I screwed I up. Did. I was like, you should get into watches. It's a cheap, fun hobby. He uh, said we could do this yeah, together. Yeah. Um, so Tim got into watches, I'd say really, really in the beginning of COVID. Was I'd say right before, like 2019. Right. So like about four years ago. And he started, you know, watching all the videos. He started watching you on videos. Uh, he started doing a lot of research and learning about brands. And um, I think a lot of women can probably relate to this because if you love someone and they start to love something, you can either let them do it all by themselves or you can join in. And I thought, if this is gonna be a hobby, this is gonna be something that he loves, I'd like to love it too. So I put in the effort and I did the research and I would watch the videos with him and we'd talk about watches and talk about brands and history. And so you kind of led me into this hobby. Yeah, that, but then you went your way, man. Yeah, it's so awesome I would running. say Tim was a collector first and I followed right on his heels. Um, I think I became a collector probably, maybe maybe this first watch, this yeah, Rolex. That, that, this, this one. This is when I felt like I was really part of the 
part of the club. A day chest 41. Yes, day chest 41. So this is 41 millimeters, which is a lot bigger than I think a lot of women would wear a watch. Um, all of my watches are technically men's watches. So the, uh, the Mega Cool is 42.8 millimeters. I love that on my wrist. It goes in my shirt, in case you were wondering. Uh, but it is all about the fit of the watch. It's all about how it feels on your wrist, the lugs, and the sizing of the strap. So for example, this is a big watch that um, I love it. It might not be for everybody, but I had to change the strap because the original strap it came with was too long. And so I would wear it and it would sit back on my wrist a little bit, not in the center. And Claudio, who we love, hi Claudio. What up Claudio? Uh, Claudio hooked me up with a short strap, um, which I guess Moser makes two different sizes of straps. I didn't realize that at the time, but he, said, he said, we can fix that for you. Because they never imagined someone with a petite wrist would want to wear a nearly 43 millimeter sports watch. I guess not, um, but they had the strap for it anyway. So I guess maybe they were thinking for a man with a smaller wrist, but for me, once they switched the strap, it now sits right in the center of my wrist. I can't even feel it when I'm wearing it. And I love it because I always get, I always make a friend when I'm wearing that watch. Somebody always asks, what is that? Where, where did you get it? Why are you wearing it? Tell me about it. Uh, the dial draws you in. There's so much about watches that is about relationships and connections and making new friends. That's and and you know the folks behind the brand. It also helps. Oh, yeah. We it love, does help. Yeah. It does Ed, help. Edouard and Claudio, they're really great guys. We went to Switzerland. We saw the factory. We went to the museum. We learned all about the history. We love Moser. Moser is our... Moser is, I think... I wouldn't even say the future of watchmaking. I think they're the present of watchmaking. That's a great way to phrase it. And I think it's interesting because you mentioned to me earlier that your strap watches you share, your bracelet watches you don't constantly resize. But was was this like a joint acquisition? Like how oh, it, did this happen? It, well, so I I got a call from our AD, lovely Natalie. Uh, Natalie's great. And we were looking for another watch for Kate that was fun. Uh, and uh, I knew the Mega Cool was obviously tough to get, but it had come in. And I said, absolutely. I said, this is a watch we can share. And then uh, I, I was hopeful Kate loved it. Kate tried it on. I was a little worried, 42.8. And it obviously fit her, she loved it. And the plan was that we would share it. But when she got that baby strap, uh, it no longer fits my wrist. I know. So Kate's, I'm sorry, Kate, I Kate stole it from you. <laughs> so we share this one and this one and this one, all the others, but that one is now just Kate. So did, that's just we Kate's We did watch. share it at first. Yeah, we did yeah. share it at first. I wore it like three times. So maybe the irony then is that the, the biggest watch on the table that's not a pocket watch is yours exclusively. Yes, yes now it is. 100%. It absolutely is. So I guess then, Tim, this is probably more your. Yeah, this is more mine. Absolutely, but the 40 mil. stealing it. We'll get into the blue dial thing with Kate, but anything with a blue <laughs> dial, she's going to take. But yeah, that's my watch. Uh, <laughs> it's true. true. It's 100% true. Uh, so I, uh, I got that just recently because it just came out. That's Moser's new 40 millimeter. They went down, and uh, it's spectacular. We were really lucky. We got to see it in February when we were out there, but we had to be quiet because it wasn't released yet. So no phones. Phones went away. Uh, and I absolutely loved it. It's the Arctic blue, and I love the indices. I love the dial. I love the rubber. I really do. I'm a rubber strap guy. I don't know what's been changing, but I'm really loving the straps lately. So I absolutely love that watch, and I think it just speaks for itself. I think it's amazing. Okay, so what interests me is that your phones are full of your adventures. Gorillas in the Congo, mountain climbing, sled dogs. There was one risk that you took solo recently, and this happened yeah. between the last show we shot it did. this one. You got to tell me where this watch has been, so Tim. So obviously, that watch has been a lot of places other than that. It was in the Congo, it was on my wrist with the grills and things, but I uh, literally, right after I left you, I went to Watches and Wonders pretty quickly. And when I was at Watches and Wonders, I got a phone call uh, from a guy in the mountain climbing community that most people would know if they're into it. His name's Nims Persia. And he said, listen, I have an expedition leaving in a couple of days that I think you'd be great on. And uh, it was a really elite team. Jay Morton was uh, the guy that was my partner and we, we did some amazing stuff, but the plan was to summit some peaks and then to summit Everest. And uh, I went there, uh, literally, I flew home from Watches and Wonders. I bought gear online, I had some gear. You packed all packed your everything, duffel bags. And then 18 <laughs> hours later, I was on a plane to uh, Nepal. And then, uh, well, with stops along the way. But I did the trek to Everest base camp in it, and then the plan was to climb Everest, but unfortunately, uh, the day before I hit base camp, the guys that were laying the lines died in an avalanche in the Kumbu, so there were three Sherpas that passed away. So I would have to have stayed uh, for month, literally a month more, which was not gonna happen. So I got to summit some other peaks in the Himalayas, which are really great. 
Uh, but that was on my wrist for 35 days in uh, the Himalayas. It's been up three, You kept sending four me pictures now. of your Omega. But the crazy thing for Omega Himalaya is, backgrounds. look at it, it doesn't look like it. And I've sent you the pictures when I was there. Yeah. So I was texting you when I was there and uh, it never failed on me. We're talking 25 degrees below zero. Uh, everything in the tent froze. I never took it off, right? You couldn't take it off, what but it was of, great. And we're talking temperatures negative 20, negative 20 25, 30. yeah. So we hit a blizzard at high camp when we were climbing um, Lhotse or Labouche. Uh, and uh, so we're at like 19,000, 19, 20,000 feet. And uh, the blizzard came in and then, you know, a, feet, a foot and a half of snow, but the snow was ice by the next morning because it was so cold. Uh, and that was working fine. So like, I'm thinking 20 below Fahrenheit, something like that, 15 below. Yeah, you did this right. When I was in college, we had a night that was negative 30 back in the early 2000s. And I think it was like negative 75 on top of Mount Washington. And I realized that when it's that cold, you don't want to wear a bracelet. No. I wore that on Mount Washington. Yes, we did Mount yes. Washington together. I drug her on another crazy adventure in February or March. We did Mount Washington. March. That's the worst time to do Mount Wait, Washington. I it was know, only it was. only like negative fifteen, so it was fall. Oh, it was oh, fall. Yeah, just a little yeah. cold. You had a wonderful story about sled dog, and we're going to want to revisit that. But <laughs> I, this this is a watch that was hijacked, from what I understand. It was stolen. It was not hijacked. We it were supposed. All it right. was stolen off my wrist. It never actually hit my wrist. We were supposed to share this watch. No, we weren't. Yes, we. That is not true. The plan was we were going to share the watch, and uh, our good friend Natalie at Govberg uh, told Tim that she had this in, invited us to come look at it, see if we liked it, and we thought that we were going to put the links in, take the links out, kind of swap back and forth. No, this is not true. She's making it true after the fact. I was searching. I've never had a Daytona. I was looking for a Daytona, I wanted rose gold, and I was waiting literally over a year, like everybody knows. So I'm waiting, 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 <laughs> waiting. And then I got the call, right? The call comes in, you're like, oh my God, the gods have bestowed benevolence on me. <laughs> so I'm like, great, I'll go get it. But I took Kate with me and she was like, oh, rose gold's beautiful. I love Rolex rose gold. I'm like, great. And then she sat and it went on her wrist it's first. It's not my fault, it looks better on me. Yeah, so she lit up <laughs> and at that moment, I, I was watching it just get sucked away from me. And and then it's it's gone. So I well, still don't have a Daytona. Poor Tim has no Daytona. I, do, huh? <laughs> I don't think anybody's losing sleep. Uh, we had a, we had a really great opportunity to get that watch. We really loved it. Um, and I will say that if you ever want it, I can put the links, back, put in. The links yeah, back in. It's not my watch. Uh, I think Rose Gold on Rolex is the best in the business. I think it's the prettiest. And obviously, I think it does look better on you. Thank you, sweetheart. I'm going to have to add marriage counselor to my LinkedIn. <laughs> the problems of Tim and Kate, who oh, takes the yes. Daytona, yeah, I guess. It's weird because my life. sister is named Kate, so we're Tim and Kate, too. Um, it's a little, two, yeah. Two, well, two, two, two Tim and Kates. Two Tim and Kates, yeah. Go around. Maybe your sister can come on the next yeah, time. You never know. I don't <laughs> think she's quite as into this as you guys are, but she's out in Colorado. She's got her start on climbing those mountains. Oh, good Good spot her. to start. Yeah, man. there's some good ones out there. Now yeah. You have a family history uh, of owning mechanical watches, and it didn't start with wristwatches. This is a fascinating piece right here. If you could tell me a little bit about your Elgin. Absolutely. So this Elgin uh, has been passed down from my great-grandmother to my grandmother, to my mom, to me. And uh, my mother's still alive, so she she was very excited to pass this down. Um, her great my great grandmother's name is Frances, and my mom's middle name is Frances, so she had a connection with her grandmother. And this was uh, a watch that she would wear with a very long chain, and would wear it in an apron pocket down, you know, between her waist and her hip, or her sorry, her waist and her knee. And so my mom had this and I'd never seen her wear it. I'd never really seen it come out. Um, but I, she was very excited to share it with me after Tim's 40th birthday. Which is over there. So the reason we have this is because before we got this, I got Tim his pocket watch. So we actually have two. I and gave then, her one rule, don't buy me a watch for my 40th birthday, because I didn't want to get a watch that I didn't like and love. I'm a little particular with watches. So I said, anything in the world, nothing, a dinner, just not a watch. And of course- And I promised I wouldn't get him a watch, but then I kind of changed it in my mind. I said, well, I won't get him a wrist watch. You didn't break the spirit of the promise. I That's know. I well, I, he, I knew that I wanted to get him something special for his 40th. And so I thought a pocket watch is something that you're going to keep for your whole life. It never goes out of style because it's already vintage. Uh, and so I started looking and I started looking at different brands because I knew he loved Moser and Moser made pocket watches. And so I was looking for 
um, something that I could get for him from Moser. But what I learned through my research is that Moser made utility watches that had been used in trenches by soldiers. And so all the ones that I found online had been very well used, meaning there were scratched and dings and dents. Folks, this is not called patina. Call it what it is, damage. Yes. Amen. And so as, here. as much as we love Moser, I couldn't bear the thought of giving Tim a scratched up, ding, dented watch for his birthday. So I started looking at other brands and I started looking at Omegas because I knew he loved Omega as well. And Omega made pocket watches and I found this yellow and white gold from about 100 years ago, circa 1920s. And it is beautiful. We really, I, I really thought that this was gonna be the perfect gift. Uh, and so I gave him this watch for his birthday, but he had no idea what it was. Even when I opened it up and had the box, I still didn't know what it was. And I also didn't know how to open the box. Right, when he got it like this, he didn't, he didn't understand how to open the box or what was inside and though. Uh, first thing I saw was, um, I didn't actually see the watch first. I don't know why, but my, I was like, Omega. And then I saw it and I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Obviously I love Omega. This is the original cool. box for the watch. Yeah. I, we get dressed up sometimes, <laughs> so it goes great. I got a three piece, it goes on it. Like, so it works. Gatsby era boxed set. That's a first for me. Yes. Yeah, it's a very cool watch. So it ties back with my great grandmother's pocket watch because my mom, um, gave me the watch and said, I'd, I'd really like if you took the chain and you split it so that you and Tim could both have a piece of the chain for your watches. So these two chains used to be the same chain, on this, yeah. this watch and now we get to share them. Yep, it yeah. didn't come with the chain, obviously. I don't want to drop it. Of course. And I didn't want to use like, I don't know, a modern leather strap or something like that. And uh, you know, rather than go shopping for a chain, we had one, so we just repurposed it. And now it's a uh, Similar uh, similar style chains, obviously, it's the same one. You have those two chains, it's the two that are one, it's like a metaphor. Yes. Yeah, two that are one. Just like Oh, us. how sweet. <laughs> so now, this was a fantastic gift because watches are a notoriously difficult gift to give to a watch enthusiast. Yes, because, I had no idea what to do with that. But how, now I keep coming back to this because I'm personally infatuated with the model, but I, I know this was a gift. Was it was, it was a gift. So I was in Mexico City and I knew Kate loved Cartier. Uh, obviously Kate can talk about that, but uh, you know, the connection there was a couple of things. One, she wanted a Cartier. Two, it is a blue dial and I had the opportunity to get it. And she uh, now has fallen in love with the bracelet and everything on it. But you know, the original pilot's watch, unbelievable history, it's a Cartier and uh, I just couldn't pass it up. So that was her gift, but she got that after she had previously gotten me a Cartier, uh, which is kind of strange because hers looks, in my opinion, more like the masculine one. Uh, but again, we can switch eventually, but that uh, I got that for you about two years ago now. So that that, that watch is, uh, it gets probably more wrist time that or the Rolex, I would say for you. Yeah, I love the Cartier. It really fits on my wrist. The, the, the links are thin, so they really do a nice wrap around. And you've mentioned that you're pretty hard on watches. You use them for showering, swimming, everything. Yes. So that makes a lot of sense. And yeah. I'm particularly surprised that your original Movado made it through all that. You know what? I didn't appreciate Lasted it enough. Lasted longer than I wanted it to. I know. <laughs> Tim didn't love the Movado. I was, it was very sentimental to me. But yeah, if I'm going to wear a watch, it's going to have to go through, you know, it's going to have to go through life because I'm not the kind of person, other than the pocket watches, which we keep very carefully, uh, but I'm not the kind of person to put something on a shelf or in a box and put it away and not use it. But yeah, all the watches get worn, man. And uh, obviously, you know, a lot of these have some sports functions, especially anything on the rubber and things like that. But, you know, it's amazing. The more you do with them, they hold up really well. It's surprising what you can get, you know, your watches to accomplish and get to go through. So, I, you know, I'm a big a advocate for wearing them yeah. all over the place. Give them a chance. Yeah. See what they can do. You had another fun, I don't know if I want to call this a fun adventure, but you had another adventure while you were wearing your Rolex Yacht Master. Yes. And I think this was when you still had your Movado. But you guys went sled dogging. And the original idea no, was- No, she wore this. She oh wore this sled God. dogging. She wore oh this. Yeah. She wore this ridiculous, yep. <laughs> this, this amazingly- In yeah. So she wore that in So we were like the northernmost piece of land. Talk about not wanting world. a bracelet. Yeah. That's how I learned. So we were a sled dog team. I mushed the dogs, which I have no idea. I'm from New Jersey. I don't know how to mush sled dogs. And Kate was uh, on the sled. You were also a rope anchor. And she wore that and I wore this. And it was when we got off the plane, it was negative 35. So it was insane. 24 hours of darkness. This is January. I was free. Her birthday's January 5th. So and, it was, and uh, in terms of sort of latitude, this is right at the top. It's even with the top of Greenland. Top of Greenland, yes. yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, the, it, the island Svalbard, the town is, actually the town is Svalbard, the island Spitsbergen. I could be butchering this a little right now, but anyway, it's a, a territory of Norway. Uh, it's not actually technically part of Norway, 
uh, and it's like a three hour straight north flight from Oslo. So it's way above the Arctic Circle. It's like, uh, you know, way north of Iceland, north of Siberia, north of everything you ever heard of. It's like the end of the earth. And uh, we did a sled dog ride there. I thought we were gonna be passengers, but apparently I was uh, leading the sled dog team. But this this went through Looking it, it through. did good. Yeah. I learned you have to wear your gloves if you're gonna wear your watch in that kind of cold, yeah. but it made it through. Yeah, you learned the lesson I learned about <laughs> bracelets, but it was a little bit more action packed. I was studying, you guys were, well, it sounds like your guide really cared. He, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, he was really involved. He wanted there. you to have an adventure. That's what. well. He kept telling me. He was, I was like, "Who's leading the other team?" And he was like, "You are." Ha ha. And I was like, "Ha ha." The joke's getting old. Like, who's leading the other team? He's like, "You are." And then the first two rules of sled dogging are don't let go of the sled, and the second rule is don't let go of the sled. So I was like, "So it's like Fight Club?" He was like, "Yes, Fight Club." He never saw Fight Club. So you know, I got on this sled and. Uh, Yi and Ho, Yi left, Ho yep. right, and then the dogs I got left. on the sled that you were pushing. Yeah. I didn't learn from the motorcycle. The first thing he said is, he's like, uh, I have rifle. If you see bear, stay near me. I go, but where are you going to be? He goes, ahead. I go, where's my rifle? He goes, you don't get a rifle. I go, well, what do I do? He goes, dogs. Dogs help. I'm like, against a polar bear? So anyway, we didn't see a polar bear. We got like, no. we saw a reindeer. We did see uh, a we reindeer. We didn't see a polar bear. Uh, but yeah, that was just one of the crazy adventures. And obviously, the watches come on all these. Uh, yes, yeah. they've been all over. Do, yeah. you re do you regret not wearing the face shield? Uh, I do a little bit because I have contacts and they froze to my eyes. I thought I'd be, he, I was like, you wearing a face shield? He's like, no. I was like, I don't need a face shield. I needed a face shield. Uh, but yeah, I take take the advice of your guides. If they tell you to wear a shield, wear a shield. If you give offered a walking stick, take the walking stick. Yeah, these are little, little life lessons. But uh, these come with us. Like that's why watches can become, you know, sentimental. They get an attachment. I, obviously people get this with cars and certain other things, but your watches are with you the whole time. Like they don't leave. They're there when you wake up, when you go to bed and you don't bring your car with you into a bar or into somewhere else. You do your watch and it'll spark a conversation. It really is great. And you get to meet all kinds of crazy people in the watch world. We've met a lot of new friends from being in the watch world. Absolutely. And obviously the guys at Moser, Edward, Claudio and things, but even uh, Rob, who was just on Collector's Conversation. Yes. I yep. met him through watches and we go out all the time now. We have crazy watch adventures. Last so it's, it's really cool. And obviously <laughs> without the watches, we, we never meet each other. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's very cool. Are you guys planning to uh, hit some of the sites and see some of the factories when you go back for the Matterhorn in Switzerland? I am planning to hit some of the sites and see some of the things. So I have to see Vacheron, which I'm supposed to go do a whole thing with, which I've been procrastinating, a little mountain climbing, a little bit of other stuff. Uh, but other than that, I, you know, I'm up to seeing anything for the most part, uh, especially the brands that you see before us. We've obviously done Moser, uh, but I would love to see Omega. I would love, you know, a little more difficult Rolex, but you know, as much as I could see. You take pictures of the outside of the exactly, building. Exactly, yes. that's about all I'm gonna get. And then I can shoot away quickly. <laughs> we can get on every yeah. list in the city. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, yeah, I, I would like to go see anybody. Cartier, you know, especially. Uh, uh, and then obviously just go to the shops, go see people, any events that are in town. Go do it and then figure out which watch I'm uh, taking up the mountain next. Yeah. Yeah. Now when we travel, we always make a point of stopping in at the, the watch stores and the dealers. It's fun, something fun for us to yeah. do. We like to see how they do it in other countries. And it's interesting because you've actually successfully given a watch as a gift at this point. So before the pocket watch, I think the, the Cartier Roton Solo, how did this happen? Was it because you fancied Cartier personally? So I have always loved Cartier. Uh, I have seen many ladies Cartiers and I think they're beautiful. They're not for me, but I think that it's such a classic look. It's a dress watch. It's something at the time you really didn't have anything like it. And uh, I knew that he had loved Cartier. He'd mentioned it a few times. And so going out on a limb with this one, thinking that he would really like it and really enjoy the the counterpoint to the sports collection that he had really been building at the time and uh we were lucky it worked out no, you he killed it that's one of my favorite watches <laughs> i wear that all the time and i dress it up sporty it can go on a suit i absolutely love it. love the roman numerals love the classicness it's and perfect for a dress watch because yeah. it's it the profile is very slim so it goes yeah. under a cuff it's not obtrusive it blends in with whatever sort of suit you're wearing gray it black it's light it's not like that jorn from last time that weighed nothing but <laughs> you know it's, it's very easy to wear believe it or not it's believe it breathable even though it's on a leather strap I don't get like the sweat stains and things like that. So I love that watch. Yeah, and if anyone's trying to give a gift um, that's a watch, don't be afraid to ask. That's the other thing. It doesn't yes. have to be a surprise. Yes. You can ask somebody what they like. You can ask them what they don't like. Yeah. And you can turn it into more of a gift adventure rather than just presenting someone. So the, the pocket watch was a surprise, but you 
can buy someone a gift that they know about. As you every can watch go, enthusiast knows, hunting for the watches is much fun as getting the watch. Right. Sometimes if you, more. If you plan the trip, if you say we're going to go one, two, three stores, we're going to look together, we're going to see what you like, and at the end of it, I'm going to make sure that you love what we get for you. Right. Um, that's another way to do it where you don't have to worry, am I doing the right thing? Another reason I love this watch, which is different than everything else, is it's my only leather strap watch. I don't, well, look, other than the Longa, uh, I don't really have any leather strap watches, especially like this one. Uh, this one has, you know, a little bit more of an airiness to it, a lightness, and uh, I just love the look of it. I love the blue hands. I, I love the, the crown. I think the crown is awesome. Uh, and I think it's classic Cartier, but it's still modern. And uh, it wears pretty thin on the wrist, which is easy, goes right under the cuff. And uh, you killed it. Like, I, I absolutely <laughs> love this watch. And, uh, you know, this is generally a watch that a lot of people can get into. I, I would say it's more along the entry lines of a luxury watch, yeah. obviously. But you can show up with this watch, which I have at any collector spot, bar, party. And it's a, it's a really cool piece to have on. Plus, I love the dial. It's not white. It's not really silver. It kind of goes back in between. But I absolutely love this watch. Now, no, Tim, your interest in watches has grown by leaps and bounds since you first got started with Rolex and Omega and, you know, up to high horology, full custom with Moser. And I got to ask, Kate, how has your taste in watches evolved? You bought yourself that first Movado. Mm -hmm. How has your preference for the styles and sizes evolved over time? So my preferences have changed over time in the sense that I exclusively wear men's watches now. The first watch that I bought for myself was a classic ladies. It was dainty and delicate. And um, as I've gotten older, you know, I bought that for myself when I was in my very early 20s. Um, I realized I'm not a dainty, delicate person. And so that's something that I don't want to be wearing a watch that doesn't reflect who I am. So I've really sized up to men's watches. I wear 40 millimeters, 41, the Mega Cool's 42.8. That's my biggest one. but. I think it says something about myself when I when I show up wearing a certain watch. Um, I've I like to have different styles. The Mega Cool is more fun. It's more uh, social. That's a summer party kind of watch. I usually wear this one to work. It's a little bit more understated. But the nice thing about wearing a Datejust is I might see someone that I've never met before, whether it's a client or a colleague or opposing counsel, there could be any number of people that I need to interact with on a daily basis who I have nothing in common with. And if I see somebody wearing a watch that I recognize, it's a bridge. It's a way to connect with someone. So the watches that I wear are the watches that I like, whether I'm wearing them or someone else, so that when I have that opportunity, I can make a connection. It's very cool. Now, normally I ask people about Grail watches, but <laughs> I don't know, if for comedy within the marriage, it's going to have to be an agreement. What's your next joint purchase oh, going to so be? She doesn't, I don't know how long she is. If I can get it, all I want is the bubbles. I know people are tearing it <laughs> apart, the Rolex <laughs> bubbles. I'm in love with it. I think it's great. The celebration the dial. celebration yes. dial. It is anti-Rolex, but still being amazing. I think that watch is fun. I have a friend, Andrew, who's telling me it's the worst watch in the world. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I think it's great. I know it sparks uh, emotion with certain Rolex purists. Good. That's what it's there for. I want bubbles. I am bubbles out. I'll fight you uh, for 41. it. 41. <laughs> but other than that, um, I don't know. Uh, obviously, like I said before, anything what Moser's doing, I'm, I'm always into what they're yeah. doing. Uh, but as far as new watches, I like to see where brands go and evolve. Uh, I like everything from a, a piece that's you know really mass produced that you can get a little easier, something like a entry level Rolex or a Cartier or something like that. And then obviously we like the high horology pieces. As far as a joint thing, I don't think we oh, have a no. joint. Because it's got to be a strap watch, right? It has, it has to be a strap, strap watch. Yeah. Yeah, has to be we strap. thought the Arctic would be a joint watch, but it really looks better on Tim. I've, I've tried it on a couple times, and it's just not, just really love it when you're wearing oh. it. So I want it to be his. I think the most joint is the Omega. I think the Omega yeah. is the one that both of us literally switch back and forth. All of we them. We both wear the Omega. One this, one this, one this. So we switch these back and forth. Uh, I, I also think that, you know, there's a couple of brands that we've never shared. Longa, ALS would be something really cool. Um, we've never shared a Vacheron. VC would be very cool. Yeah, we could try one a of those. A Vacheron would be something to be very cool to be shared. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a new Panda, which is great, uh, but that is on, uh, you know, the, the, the not bracelet. Me. It's not exactly hers. No. Uh, but, you know, other than that, uh, I don't know. What, what are you thinking? 
Oh. Yeah, Kate, selfishly. Selfishly. Just, what do you, forget what do I want? Who yeah. wants you to what's, the, what's the grill <laughs> wash, you know? Oh, man. I think I I feel like I need something with some gemstones in it because Tim's got gems in his collection Which now. I normally never thought I would ever have. Black know. diamonds. Yeah, black diamonds, yeah. he's got so some that's black diamonds. It. So I think um, I've looked at a few... Uh, a few Rolexes with the diamonds in them, and I think that might be in my future. All oh, right, yeah. Rolex with ice. I yeah, know, Rolex with plan. ice. I you know. guys have certainly had enough ice. Yeah. <laughs> well, these are things that like we we've evolved, right? Like we used to talk about gemstone watches and make fun of them. I know. Uh, we did. I know. Uh, but, now, but then when you see them, and you there's such a difference between looking at something on a photo or thinking about it and making a judgment about it until you put it on your wrist and you see how it feels. And you're gonna grow, right? Like you're gonna yeah. change what you like. You'll come back, like there's certain classics that will never go away. I'll never ever not like this watch. This yeah. watch will be with me forever and ever. Uh, I don't ever see this Omega going out of style. I don't really see a lot of these going out of style, but like this is not appropriate for every setting. Like I, I tell Kate, if you're going into the courtroom and it's a new case, don't wear your <laughs> don't mega. Don't wear cool. the mega. Don't cool. be like, hello, your honor. Like, don't wear the mega cool. Uh, God bless Moser, but not a mega no, cool in the no, first day no. in the courtroom. Uh, but you know, some of the other watches are, are are definitely a little bit more easy to wear, like the the Cartiers, for instance, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So watches serve different purposes. There's fun watches. There's party watches. There's your business watch, your office watch. Uh, so I don't know. I, I'm leaning more towards the. The, the daily wear, as boring as that sounds, this is my new favorite one. I wear it literally almost every day, especially since it's summertime. But with the rubber strap, it's just easy to go, man. Yeah. It's just easy to put it on, easy to go. I think we've come around more to the daily wearing like world yeah. no, because there's a lot. You know, there's a lot that you can explore. There's a lot that you can try and. Uh, like we said, we really love to wear our watches, so you don't want to get something that you're afraid to take out of the box. Yeah, there's no triple bridge tourbillons on the table here. No, no there are no triple no. bridge tourbillons on the table. <laughs> the most delicate ones, obviously, are not getting the most wear, but they have safety chains, so they can't even hit the floor. <laughs> uh, I was very clear that the chain had to be long enough, so if I drop it, it doesn't hit the floor. But no, these are these are watches that, that get worn, and we wanted to showcase that, because that's who we are. Obviously, we have some very special pieces, uh, but a lot of those aren't daily wearers. You know, you're not my red Moser, the, the tourbillon. The, that's not getting the wrist time that any of these other watches are. It's still an amazing watch. I love that watch. Maybe the prettiest dial out of all the watches we have, but it's not gonna be on the wrist the way the Mega Cool is. So, you know, there's just something to that. And I like the clean look. You know, Tourbillon's great, but there's something about a clean dial that's just, uh, that's just nice. So I, I think watches, like I said, to nauseam, they should be worn. Like you should put them on and take them for spins. Tim, Kate, thank you so much. This has been an absolute blast. And thanks to you for joining us. His, hers, and mine. Time out, Tim out. Thanks for logging on.